We have all seen these small black mystery boxes inside electronics, but what do they do? What's inside them? Do they go well with salsa? No, they, they do not. Just trust me on that. But no matter how powerful our computers get, they all start with these basic fundamental arrangements of transistors called logic gates. If you are new to my channel, feel free to check out my previous video where I designed and built my own working computer that I hope is relatively easy to follow and helps better explain how a computer works. You can think of a transistor like a pipe preventing water from passing through unless a small stream of water is sent to the valve in the middle. We can build simple logical situations out of this property. If we arrange two transistors in series, then we know the first transistor and the second both need to be on for water to flow through. This is called the AND gate. Or we can make a path for either transistor, thus creating the OR gate. We can also make it possible for water to flow through, but not if the transistor is on. Try to visualize the NOT gate as a box that has water shooting out the backside and that stream will turn off if water is shot into the front side. Next imagine two NOT gates linked from output to input. You can see how one gate will always be on while the other is off. This is how computer RAM memory holds its information. As a visual learner and a maker, I'm excited to show you this device I made that clearly displays these rock stars in action. Both buttons need to be on for the AND gate, either for the OR gate, this button turns off the NOT gate, and two NOT gates make up this one bit of memory. It's wonderful in its simplicity, and actually quite addicting. Hashtag the next fidget spinner. I 3D printed the case out of filament made of real wood that can be sanded and even wood stained. This is a fun project, and I'm really happy with how this turned out. Alone, these logic gates don't do much, but when dozens or even millions are chained together in a certain way, they can be used inside IC chips to accept user input, decode binary values, add numbers, read from memory, send to display, send to speakers, and many, many more. If you like this video, then please like and subscribe, or follow me on Instagram for progress updates. And if you did not like this video, then remember to subscribe anyway, because I create many different types of videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.